Alrighty, Mr. Gatekeeper here. Out here around the northeast end of Georgia, about 3.30 in the morning. Got Mr. Grass Barber's uh, Messenger M4V right here. This is actually uh, one that he had sent out this way, and uh, I converted it to a high drive for him. Took the driver out and retuned the uh, the whole lamp, cleaned the whole lamp from top to bottom. Done a couple other things to it, retuned the output and stuff. And uh, he got it and was using it and everything. And he finally figured out he was having some issues with the relay. There were some some uh, some high spikes of reflect coming out on the output, and I quickly figured out that the relay was just going bad. Now, I'm a, I'm a big fan of messenger amps. I am a very big fan of messenger amps. Let me see if I can get this focus in here. And as you see, these right here are your normal 5 amp double pole double throw relays. Okay. Now there's mathematical uh, calculation excuse me mathematical calculations you can do on how much RF power that these can handle through their contacts okay because we're dealing with RF power which is high voltage low amperage high voltage RF god dang I got a fire going over here okay, hold on a second <laughs> I thought I was smelling something. <laughs> Excuse me, y'all. I think I put me a cigarette out before I started this video, and I didn't put it out good. I'm glad that thing turned around. You know, it could have caught my hair on fire or something. <laughs> God damn money. Woo! I need to pour some of my Gatorade up in here, man. God damn money. Deal with that later. All right, sorry about that. Let's get back to what we were saying. <laughs> you keep things real here. I ain't editing that out. I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time to do no editing. All right. Um. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, let me get back focused here. So these are five amp relays. Normally, I like to use these on my two tra uh, one transistor, two transistor, and three transistor amps, okay? Anything up from there, I like to go ahead and move on to a 10 amp. We're dealing here with a nine transistor amplifier, but if you look at it to be an equivalent to the 2879, you're dealing with about, about five, five and a half 2879s, okay? Because these are 60 watt, you know, medium 60 watt, MRF 455s, eight of them. There was a one by eight, which would be a nine total. But it don't even matter if it's his two driving eight with all 2879s. He always uses this relay. And I've, I've had problems with these in a few of these amplifiers so far. And I've, I've heard of people also having problems. And I think the reason why he stayed with this is just because of the design of the amplifier. This relay cannot stand up. It's got to lay down. He would have had to do some, some, some major redesigning to fit them on a board like this. I mean, it could have been done easily. But, you know, they're obviously big enough to handle what he done. But by a rule of thumb, I like to use these no bigger on a three transistor amp. I know some people like Dave Made and some other fellows that have used these size sizes on five transistor amps that hold up just fine. Heck, I know a buddy of mine that's been running a five transistor amp for whew, ten years using one of the uh, relay like this on it. So they're obviously big enough. But just by a rule of thumb, I like to upgrade to the ten amp when I get get anything past a three transistor amp just to be safe. Okay, so basically instead of just pulling this relay off this board i mean i would have had to take this board out anyway really to replace it it, it, it would have been a tough job to replace this relay 
without taking this board off. <clears throat> I thought I might as well go ahead and upgrade the relay. Okay. Now, this size relay for the preamps is, is 10 times overkill. Because <laughs> you're pretty much done with an active device at that point. So, I mean, you're only dealing with the, 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 the electricity that's coming off your antenna. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, <laughs> you're dealing with microamps. So that's definitely overkill with that, but it's just the issue with this, you know, it just doesn't sit too well with me. Well, anyway, I have never done this before. And when I've done something, when I'm doing something I've never done before, I always like to draw a schematic or a pictorial diagram. That's just the way I have to do things. When I was young, they tried to say I had a short-term memory disorder. <laughs> Which means I just can't remember ASHI, you know what I mean? So, uh, I do get bad short-term memory. So anyway, it just helps me when I write stuff down, you know. It just helps things flow a lot better. And also it gives me something to look at while I'm doing the job. So this is what I did. I just drew out the... Uh, a, p a pictorial diagram of the back of that and just some notes down here to help me when I'm running the wire so and uh, this is still operational if you ever want to make you a Molox connector to use you know use that as a uh, remote for the amp so I still got all that hooked up for you bud uh, built you a new preamp put in there and got everything else ran for you so we'll put that to the side use that for a future it might have to do this again for the future, so we'll put it in the old archive. So here we go. Okay. Got everything ran for you, man. The new new relays dropped in, new uh, new preamp. Got everything re-ran for you. The only thing that was different than the way he was doing things on here is the SSB delay. Okay. This is your SSB delay. And that probably will make a lot of people confused. How is that the SSB delay being so small? Well, I won't get real technically into it, but he's achieving the SSB delay not by giving the coil a delay of unlatching. He's actually getting closer down to the issue where it's really, if you ask me, it's where it should be done, and it's going to the uh, keying transistor. I won't get technically into how it's being done. But I've thought about playing around with that a little myself. And a lot of these older amplifiers use that method. And if you ask me, it's way more efficient. Works way better than the way that all of us do it now these days. And uh, when I get some time, I'll play around with that. Well, anyway. So I got everything done for you, bud. And I turned this bad boy on. In the barefoot mode, just keyed up. Make sure that RF's flowing through everything while you're barefoot and here's what I found when I done it okay this is my radio oh four watts okay when I was looking at the input reflect this is what I saw do almost a half a watt of input reflect do you see that now keep in mind, this amplifier has no power hooked up to it at all. The power is hooked up, but the power is not on, as you can see. I've got the, uh, the switcher over there hooked up to it right now. It is not turned on. This reflect is completely what you call active, meaning it's reflect from no power being turned on. It's not from the transistors. It's not from, 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 the, from the pills being tuned, nothing like that. Half a watt. Oh, almost a half a watt. This is from the RF coming in. Sorry to be doing a lesson, but I'm going to tell you why I'm doing this in here in just a second. The RF coming in, going to the main relay right here, okay? Leaving this relay and traveling down this direction right here, okay? This is coming, well, coming in from the antenna side, Travel around this direction to the pre preamp section, okay, through the jumper on the preamp section, back this direction right here, back through the relays contacts, and then out back out the amp. Through all that it has to go through, there's a mismatch. 
is causing a small slight mismatch just giving you a little bit of reflect just talking barefoot through here now that could be an issue i mean a half a watt probably not probably not but i'm about to tell you a little story where it did cause an issue <clears throat> i had a buddy send me an amplifier about three years ago he had blown a a striker i can't remember what striker it was but he had blown it three times the final had blown in it three times he sent me the striker i didn't even get to do a video on this man i can't remember why there's a lot of stuff i didn't get to do videos on i don't do videos on all the amps now but i try to whenever someone asks me to if i can um if i got time so anyway not to bore you he sends me the striker and he sends me the amplifier the amplifier is a homebrew one driving four amp it's just a homebrew who don't know who built it the main relay is right in this section okay the preamps relay is all the way over here in this direction right here that far away from the uh, main relay it was done exactly as you see the way that I have this done now. Okay. But he had straight wire just like this. 100 ohm wire. That pretty much comes up to about 100 ohms if you, if you look at it in that sense. All the way to here and back. Somewhat of doing all that the way it was done. He had almost a watt and a half worth of input reflect with the box turned off. This, this is with the box turned off. Okay. so Because when you key... This preamp and these wires, they're completely out of circuit. They're not even nowhere, they're not even in circuit, period. And he always could not figure out that's when he would blow his radios when he was in barefoot mode. <laughs> so we quickly figured out what it was. And if anybody does have to run a preamp that far from, there is a way to do it without having to have um, reflect issues like that. It's best to go down to a 50 ohm coax at that point we won't get on that technical details but anyway i was thinking about that when i saw this okay so whenever you have an issue like this you got to do a little bit of tuning but different type of tuning not tuning like with the amplifier but tuning on the main rf line in the barefoot mode okay now watch this i'm gonna press pause and i'm gonna uh, get this thing tuned out again and we'll be right back Alrighty. Alrighty, we got it tuned out. Now take a look at this now. Here's your input reflect. With the box turn, it's not input, excuse me. I'm so used to saying input reflect. This is your input reflect in front of the amplifier, but you pretty much are going to have this same reflect on the output too. Because this is a straight line going in and out of the amp. Okay, but here's the reflect just from the amp being in barefoot mode, okay? But now I've got it tuned out. Do yeah. Ooh yeah. Ooh yeah. Ooh. That's how it's supposed to look. You can't even see it moving. Do yeah. And we got a thousand watt slow again, but you can see it's got output. Do ooh. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, no reflect. I mean, it's moving just a teensy, but you can't tell. You can't tell. So now, after we get done with the video, that's why I left the trimmer in there so I could demonstrate that. I'll get that mic in and get that silver dip mic in there for you, bud. Uh, sometimes you don't have to do that. It's, it's real weird. Sometimes you don't have to. Sometimes you do. It's... It's so crazy. I think a lot of it's got to do, too, with the SO239s and just other things, man. It's, it's a lot of stuff involved with this stuff when it comes to tuning. It, it really is. Because on one box, it's perfect. On the other box, you got to do a little bit of tuning and throw your cap on the main rail right there. So, All right, man. Well, the next thing I wanted to show is after doing all this, the only other thing that really had to kind of be changed in a sense was how the B plus voltage, the AB bias section was getting 
Well, basically, how, how it was getting to this relay right here. This relay right here is your AB bias uh, relay. This is a relay that latches when you key that sends voltage to the sandbars on through the AB bias circuit. Okay, unregulated AB. This is unregulated AB. This is pretty much about the same circuit I'm currently using now, and I'm working on upgrading to a more regulated and even further than that. But, you know, we take one thing at a time. So I had to do uh, some, uh, not too much of manipulation, but a little bit of manipulation to make sure to get that hooked up properly so that it's doing the same thing. So I'm just going to demonstrate that and let you take a look at the voltage on key. Now that's one more thing I want to show you that I did. And this actually makes it easier on me to show you this. You know, you had this on here so you can manually key the amp. Well, I went ahead and found a, a, a use for this switch back here, okay? I didn't want it just be sitting there not being used. So turned on, then this is active, okay? And you can use the keyer. And turned off, it ain't. So I, I found some use for that switch, Grass Barber. <laughs> All right, so let's turn the, uh, the amplifier on. Turn the supply on, 14.6 volts. This is the keyer down here. It's broke, but it works. And as you can see, it's keying the amp, no problem. Okay. All right, well now, I'm gonna put it back down here by my foot so I can show you the bias voltage. All right. We've got the meter hooked to ground. I'm just gonna pick a transistor. Okay, the base of this transistor right here, here's your bias voltage. Dot six, seven volts right there on the money where you wanna be. We'll do this one right here just for the heck of it. They're all gonna be the same. They're all on the same rail, but just to show you, 0.67 volts, 0 0.67, 0 0.68. That is exactly where you wanna be. Exactly where you wanna be. All right, man, well, I'm gonna get these uh, right here unhooked and uh, don't really have to show you an output, but I'm gonna go ahead and show output anyway. We've already, you've already seen the output, but since we've had all this change done to it, I'm gonna key it up and let you see some output. I'll be right back. All right, brother, this amplifier truly needs to be ran on a regulated supply, so I'm just gonna give a quick burp on RMS. Okay, we got it on the 100 amp supply here. Eight MRF 455s. Tuned per, for, for perfection. I just got the one pill right here hitting it. Turn it all the way up. It's 128.79. Just putting about 50 RMS into it. <clears throat> about 100 watts, 120 watts PEP. 1,000 watt slug. There's your 400 watts RMS. I tell you what, this thing is pulling some current, son. <laughs> Take a look at the bolts drop. This is a 100 amp supply now. 14.4 volts. All right, I ain't going to key up on it no more. But it is pulling that 100 amp supply no problem down to its duty cycle. 400 watts RMS, that's peaking well over 1,000 watts. This thing might be working better than it was. I might have to watch the old video and check it out and see, Mr. Grass Barber. I'm going to go do that right now while this one right here is uploading. Old gatekeeper right here around the northeast end of Georgia. You got something like this you need done, something repaired, something built? Holler at me and my homeboy, Mr. 073. We're doing everything we can over here, y'all, to get these... uh boxes here and back out i know mr grass barber had to wait a little bit on this i hate that he had to but hey we're doing everything we can y'all y'all just remember that custom work takes time repairs take time hey everything takes time <laughs> god bless 73rds see if we can't get another video done before i go in there and hit the old sack i'm going bye bye